Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor, and today we have Allison Jubreau, and she is a therapist, a licensed therapist, and she has some great topics to talk about today. I'm going to open the doors to her, and I'm going to let her tell you a little about herself and what she does, because she really covers a couple of different things about women and different areas in their life that they struggle with. So I really want her to explain what she does and how she's able to help people very similar to herself and to me and to all the hundreds of women out there that go through the same different types of struggles in their own lives. So take it away, Allison. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So as you mentioned, I'm a licensed, uh, licensed therapist. I also do mindset coaching um, and I'm an international speaker, but I main, my main audience here is talking to women and especially the type of women that are really trying to do it all, right? So maybe they're like a lady boss, they're an entrepreneur, maybe they're a mom who's really hustling, maybe they're both. Um, but when I work with these types of clients, um, the three things that I focus on are anxiety, trauma, and I do talk about sex and intimacy. So those are sort of the three pockets that I really approach when I'm talking to, to women. Um, and what I've found is a lot of the times when someone's really high functioning, right, when they're successful, when they're really working hard, again, whether it's at work, showing up to the workplace, staying late, coming in early, answering a lot of emails after hours, or like they're the mom that's the first person to volunteer to pick up the kids at school, they're doing the bake sales. These type of women often are still struggling internally, right? So like to the outside world, they kind of have it all together. Right? They've got the nice house, they've got a beautiful family, they have a nice resume, but internally, they're just really struggling to feel like they're, they're enough. And, you know, really, my job is to help them connect what the outside world is seeing to really what's happening internally. Right. What I've been doing for a while. You know, I think it's so important, especially when it comes to high achieving women, you know, you get so caught up with so many different things, you know, many people are mothers and they're trying to make enough of time so they don't neglect their children. Some people have a very hard time because they want to be successful, but then they feel this guilt if they don't spend all their quality time and energy on their children, they they feel like they're not a good enough mom. And, and then they struggle because they want to achieve more for themselves, but yet they're torn between their children and the future goals that they've always, you know, those dreams, those goals, those, those bucket lists in the back of their head that they want to achieve, but they feel kind of torn. And then you have those high achieving women that are trying to do it all and they're just totally drained. And they just, you know... They just don't have, you know, they're they're unhappy inside because they they're they're given too much of themselves and they have no time for themselves. They're not giving themselves self love and self care, and it's really slowly destroying them inside emotionally. And and overall, when it starts to do that emotionally to you, it affects you physically. It's like the walls of your immune system fall and you kind of open yourself for all these different you know conditions that just kind of make its way in. And, uh, you know, so maybe we can tap in and we can, you know, start with one of them. So for those high achieving women that are trying to do it all, you know, maybe you can give some input and some ideas of what they can do so they can balance their lives. Yeah. You know, the first thing I wanted to comment on is because you made a really good point is just that like mind body connection. So, you know, I'm in mental health, right. Mm -hmm. But sort of my soapbox agenda is that like mental health and physical health, like we've as a society, hold them apart, but like mm -hmm. our body does not know the difference, right? Yeah. So when we're talking about health and we're talking about wellness, um, a lot of what we need to focus on is our mindset, yeah. right? So for these high achieving women, when like exactly what you said, there's so much guilt, right? That's like the number one emotion that I identify with women, right? Is that they just you know, they want to make time to take a Peloton class, but they feel terrible that they've left their kids for an hour or they have to take a meeting or vice versa, right? Yeah. They have to say no to a work meeting and they have to take care of their kids. Um, and, you know, what I would say to them is, you know, it sounds cheesy. It sounds cliche, but I really do believe your self-talk like, really, really matters, right? So, you know, our self-confidence and our self-esteem, we kind of know what that is. It's like, yeah. do we like ourselves? But many people actually are not very in tune with what they are telling themselves on a day-to-day -day 
basis. And I think, you know, my, my career started with men. So it's taken like quite a different turn that I primarily work with women. Yeah. You know, I, I do think that there's like a huge societal expectation for women to sort of have this like martyr mentality. Yeah. Right. And like, you know, in kind of modern day age, we're getting new messaging around that. Like self-care isn't selfish. You are allowed to have it all. However, it's our, our old patterns, like how many times we've been taught, like a good mom, you put your kids first. Right. And I'm not arguing like neglecting your child or being irresponsible, but you know, that, that stereotypical metaphor therapists love to use, which is like, Hey, the plane's going down. You have to put the mask on first, right. Before you can help other people, including your own child. Like that is a really powerful truth. Right? Yeah. We're not taking care of ourselves and we're you know, burning up the candle at both ends and then lighting it on fire. Like we're not doing good for anyone, right? Like that's not yeah. a great space to be operating from. So usually when I'm working with clients, like the first thing we do is just kind of identify like where they're struggling. Like what are they actually thinking? Like, yeah. right. And a lot of the times it'll look something like, you know, um, I don't want to hurt other people's feelings by saying no, a good mom always shows up right? You know, I need to provide for my family. And so we just get a little softer on that messaging. You know, we're not abandoning it completely. There's truth in all of those sentences, but, you know, let's add some and sentences. I can be a great mom and a career woman and still make time for myself. Right. If yes. that's so that's usually where I start. I okay. think that's so important because I, you know, and I also think it's, it's very important for for, for, you know, achieving women and any type of woman for, you know, to give self-love, self-care to themselves, to take time out, to really, you know, do things for themselves. And, you know, like you said, you know, you, you have to put the mask on first before you could help your children on the plane or anybody else to the effect. And, you know, what are some things that you suggest that, that could be really helpful when it comes to maybe different types of techniques or things they could start to do to, to start to renew themselves so they can feel and, you know, apply self-love and self-care to themselves. So they actually get into that stabilized mood, both in their mindset and also help them physically too. Yeah. So I usually offer three ideas and they're all a little bit different, right? So the first idea is you can call it a mantra. You can call it an affirmation. I come from like a brain science background. So we call it neural pathways. Yeah. But, you know, pretty much all research across psychology, wellness, spirituality proves that the more we think one thing, the more we subconsciously believe it, right? And the example I'll give is if you're driving from your house to work, you don't really think that much about point A to point B, right? right? Because you've done it so many times, it's conditioned to just happen. All of our thoughts work that way. So if we're telling ourselves, I'm not enough, I need to work harder, my I'm not worthy, we might not be completely aware that that is powering a lot of our decisions. Yeah. So, you know, to me, like the basic 101 is to start to become more mindful and aware of those thoughts. Yeah. And I actually you know, have clients create an affirmation that's for themselves. And I ask them to commit to practicing it for 30 days. Right. And I usually pair it with something like brushing your teeth, drinking your morning cup of coffee, whatever you do habitually, right? Like, Hey, we are actually going to rewire your brain. And, you know, my background in brain health, I believe this in the scientific method to that. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two is I do believe, you know, we often think of self-care like bath bombs, Pedicures, <laughs> manicures, massages. And those are great. Listen, I, I love a good massage, <laughs> but we really need to teach ourselves more coping skills. So, yeah. you know, I'm a huge believer in mindfulness and mm -hmm. that can look like meditation. It can look like yoga. It can also look like just watching a TV show without using your phone. Mindfulness to me is losing judgment yeah. and just doing the thing that's in front of you because our brains need to quiet. Right? Yes. Mm hmm. And then the third one is a little more complicated and it's, so I'm going to back up a second. In COVID, I worked a lot, as you can probably imagine, right? People were yeah. not having a great time. And so when the world kind of shut down, the number one thing I realized um, was people didn't know what to do, right? So when I would say, okay, what are your hobbies? Let's think about something. Yeah. It was actually shocking to me how few people had slowed down enough to just even had any idea what they like to do anymore. So, you know, when we talk about self-care, it doesn't have to look like those relaxing techniques. It can, yeah. but it's also, you know, oh, I really, for me, this is mine, right? I 
used to be a dancer when I was younger. And then I disconnected for that for like 20 years. And I had someone ask this question of me, like, well, what do you like to do? And it was heartbreaking to me that I really couldn't think of things, right? I've now joined like a pole dancing studio, right? And I, I go dancing and it's, you know, a way to really, really show up for myself. It's my time. I don't share it with anybody else. Mm-hmm. Very embodied experience, right? Yours doesn't have to look like that. I don't, maybe you want to remember how to, you know, you liked reading. Maybe you want to take up crochet, right? Yeah. So it's just like reconnecting to who you are. Right. Nothing to do with anybody else. Right. Oh, that's so true. You know, I, I think mindset is such an important factor when it comes to healing yourself and really strengthening yourself so you can move forward in life. Because the one thing I, I see that, you know, our society has become such a technical society that people can't stay off those phones and they're either looking at their business or they're looking at social media and they can't break away. It's become a bad habit. And you can't relax your mind. People don't even realize, even when you're using social media, you're using your brain. You're not giving your mind a a, a time of rest and renewal. And it really, it plays a, a draining effect on your body. And if it, if it drains your body, then obviously you can't think clearly. You can't focus. You can't see things in the way that you should be seeing things. And, you know, and when you're, we're so kind of like, overwhelmed that's when the anxiety sets in that's when that draining feeling comes in and your eyes feel heavy and and then you just can't you can't work to your full potential you can't be who you are you can't reach that potential of where you your your mind is 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 kind of dreaming like that that realistic goal you have how are you going to achieve it if you don't take care of your mind, body, and spirit and connect them as one, you know, it whole, you know, our whole body connects, the whole world is run with, with energy. So really it all starts in the mind. You know, once you have that, that, that mindset, you can control your body and then you connect with that energy and that energy becomes a, a free flowing energy. And it's not, it's not blocked and you're able to function and you're able to really reach those goals. I feel how do you feel about that? I, I would describe it in an extremely similar way, right? You know, we have, I, I use the words blocks, right? And whether we're talking about it from like energetically, from a psychological point, again, it all sorts of points to the same thing. Yeah. When our brain is clogged up with stuff that isn't fulfilling, we can't, you know, I, I have a program that's called Becoming Unstoppable. And we, I talk about this quite a lot in that program. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we only have so much energy inside of any given day, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, clearly we all have responsibilities, right? I have to pay my bills. I have to pick up my stuff done from school. That those are things that will exist inside of my life. Yeah. We're not talking about abandoning that stuff, but it's the mental, emotional fatigue that we have around like beating ourselves up, thinking we have to do more mindless activities, like scrolling, you know, listen, Hey, I have a social media presence. I, I believe in social media, but doing it intentionally versus mindlessly, because it does, it does drain us, right. It yeah. is effortful. And so really just like reconnecting to the things that are really fulfilling rather than draining. And that should be obvious, right? Like it, it doesn't feel like it's a mic drop moment. And yeah. yet, when I talked to so many hundreds of women, it's, it's like they ha- they know that logically, but they haven't actually integrated that into their lives because it's really hard to. Right. You know, you know I, I think, you know, you have to be able to like break it down and really, I think, put things into priority, you know, what's important for you and, ju- and stop and just block out the rest of the world. What is going to make you a better person, me- you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, what do you need to do for yourself, you know? And I think, you know, people are always looking to please others. You have a lot of pleasers and people are worried about what others are going to think and being judged by others. But it really, what I think it boils down to is how we feel about ourselves. That's what matters. You know, what's your feelings on that? Yeah. And, you know, you bring up a great point. So I, I like to talk about comparison bias. And I think that that is like one of the biggest energy vampires that we have in our lives. Right. And yeah. by comparison bias, I mean, just you know, comparing yourself and where you think you're supposed to be based on other human beings. Mm-hmm. Because first of all, we each and every one of us have our own lived experience, have our own perspective, have our own dreams. 
So, you know, comparing ourselves to others really is just sort of a losing battle. But yeah. then beyond that, we're usually comparing it to something that we see on Instagram, right? Some, And, you know, both metaphorically and yeah. literally, those things are filtered, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody is posting their bad day. No. Right? You know, no one's posting the picture you, that got into a screaming fight at Christmas. It's like, no, they're posting the one with the matching pajamas. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, you know, we, we don't realize how heavy that is to wear when we're feeling judged or less than other people. Yeah, exactly. You know? And so often I just hear all sorts of clients say things like, it's too late for that. I'm too old for that. I don't have enough money for that. Right. And it's, it's, again, it's, it's, we're on our own path, right? Mm-hmm. Each and every one of us, I got married when I was 40, right? I started mm-hmm. my epic business in my, you know, I got my second master's degree in my late thirties. Yeah. So, it's, it's okay to do things at your own pace. Like this is, this is your race, right? Yeah. No one else matters. And I think that is, especially in the world of social media, it's, it's very, very difficult to detach yeah. from everything else and really connect into ourselves. But that is where we grow, right? That's where growth works, right? We get very distracted by other people, you know, it, it's intrinsic and internal and all of that energy needs to be really just filtering through our own bodies to really make progress. Yeah. And you've made some really great points. One point is that you can't compare yourself to somebody else because you don't know where, how, what that person did to get to the level they're at. You know, they, they could have been doing this for years and years and years and years and years, or they could have a team of people that are helping them. And, you know, you're all by yourself and you just started. So they're on level 33. You might be on level three, but you're living in totally two different worlds. So you can't compare yourself to them. You need to just like focus on yourself. And another great aspect that you brought up was the social media. You know, people don't, no one's going to post the bad stuff. You very rarely see anyone post the bad stuff, you know, and, and everything is filtered. Have you ever seen like on TV or you see like, you will like a TMZ type thing where they see the person coming out of the car when they first got out of their apartment or walking the dog without all their glamour makeup on. And, you know, they're in sweats and they look nothing like they look on TV you know it's like it's not real you know it's like you know and then sometimes you don't even notice the person it's like who is that person and then you realize it's that actress or actor and like oh my god they don't look anything like they do on tv well that's because they had like seven hours of makeup and (laughs) and, you know wardrobe you know it's not real you know, and people have to really realize that you can't, you can't look at this stuff and take it seriously. You have to really focus on you and what, and you want, you know, you don't want people to like you and make, put like a persona on. You want people to like you for you. I think it, you know, I think that's where your strengths will come in. You can give your input on this because, you know, if, if people like you for who you are, I think that's going to boost your self-esteem and your resilience up. Don't you think? Absolutely. Right. And, you know, I think again, for like confidence, um, I always tell this story, but when I was back in, in live in-person therapy, yeah, uh, I did a little, I did a little experiment one day and every single female who walked through the door, I gave them a compliment and almost without fail, every one of them negated the com- compliment. Right. So really? like, this, like, Oh my God, Sally, your hair looks so beautiful today. Oh, really? I haven't even gone to the salon yet. Right. Like <laughs> oh, this old shirt, and it really showed me how quickly we devalue ourselves. Yes. And I think, you know, again, that messaging, when I tell women like, hey, listen, you get to show up, you get to like yourself, you get to yeah. be, one of the first things they say is like, well, when I come off as bitchy, when I come off as narcissistic, and it's like, no, you can really love yourself, think you're beautiful, think you're successful, think you're a great human, and yeah. not value other people. I can say I'm amazing, but so are you. And that. Yeah that's, that's the, that's the good stuff, right? Like rising each other up, including ourselves. Yeah, that's so true. You know, and and people have to really learn to love themselves. They have to really, you know, be happy with who they are, you know, and and I think it's really, it starts with just like being able to look in the mirror and love yourself. And if there's things you don't see that, you know, things you see that you don't really like, well, do something about it, you know, make some changes, you know, get to that point where you can maybe set, you know, you can tell me what you think, maybe set some short-term goals and long-term goals and try to, you know, figure out a way where you can improve those little things in your life. And I always say like, 
you know, communication with yourself is key. And so is honesty. Honesty is key also. What are your thoughts? Absolutely. Right. And, you know, for me, I use, I think honesty is a great word. I use the word insight, right? Mm -hmm. It's like really starting to, and, and that to me is like a huge component of mindfulness. Notice what you're thinking without judgment, right? So, you know, something that I notice is women will be jealous or envious, mm -hmm. right? And they get very shameful of that. And what I'll ask them to do is, you know, similar to what you were just saying, like, get curious there. What does this person have that you don't have? And then how can you get it, right? Because we are always just one decision away from a different life. Yeah. You know, we don't have to like burn our lives on fire, but we can take small, objective little steps to really accomplish whatever it is we want in life, right? Like yeah. I live in Bali, right? But if I could live anywhere in the world, I'd live in Bali until the day I die. <laughs> I have, right? I have responsibilities and a career here. Yeah. But when I went to Bali and I was very envious and very jealous of all of them who lived in this lifestyle, it allowed me to realize that I needed to be closer to water, right? I needed to just make more time for me to experience like nature and the ocean. Yeah. And so, you know, now I, I try every three months to like get myself down to what I live in Jersey. So sometimes I get to the Jersey shore. Sometimes I go someplace more exotic, Yeah, right? whatever, whatever, whatever is available to me. Yeah. But it, it's a way that I was able to incorporate what I wanted and make it actually achievable inside of this lifetime. And I think that's, that's a really important step of, you know, becoming unstoppable, feeling really great about ourselves, feeling empowered, feeling you know, confident, all of that. Yeah. I, I love that idea of, you know, if, if you feel envious of somebody, you know, what is it that makes you so envious and what can you do to change yourself or your life so you could have something similar that's going to give you that satisfaction. And I think people have to realize too, that when people get envious, because I've known so many people, they get envious of other people's materialistic things. But when it comes down to it, materialistic things mean really nothing. If you're not happy with yourself as a person, you could have all the materialistic things in the world and you're still not going to feel good because materialistic things is, is as good as they might be and in, in luxury wise. And, you know, they're not going to make you happy. They're not going to give you the satisfaction, the inner satisfaction, the inner love, the inner power that you need to be a good person and to feel good about yourself because you have to really, it all comes down to loving yourself and, and being happy with who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. That. You know, when you come across people who share that that shame and that guilt and and you you and, you know, sometimes when you were you were saying that, I, I think sometimes it goes back to the root. You know, when we were younger, something happened, you know, and it kind of like sticks with us. I feel like sometimes, you know, every time you have trauma in your life, it, it puts a scar tissue in, inside your heart, you know, and it's really learning how to overcome it, you know, and how do you feel about that when you see your own patients that you talk to? Do you feel like a lot of times it goes back to a, a root cause, something that's happened in their past, whether it's their childhood or, you know, some, some period in their life of trauma or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're not born inside of a vacuum, right? So we come out into the world and we are immediately influenced by the people around us. And that can look certainly like parents, but siblings, right? Teachers, if you're in a religious background, you know, clergy and things like that. And as we move through life and we develop, you know, we develop the capacity to challenge the thoughts that we've had, but sometimes we don't know to do that, right? So, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, I grew up in a household where like cleanliness and like having a clean house was like extremely important to my mother. Yeah. And, you know, in my adult life, while I certainly have a neat house, the level of like tip top cleanliness has been something that is not necessarily a core value to me and actually causes me anxiety, right? Like yeah. I don't need to clean the toilet every day. <laughs> and, you know, I had to really like pull that thought out, right? It's not a traumatic thought, right? right. And so not every trauma does this to us for sure. Yeah. But even the later end stuff, it's like, oh, where did I get this thought from? My mother. Right. Do I agree? It's like, no, actually the way that I want to live my life is sometimes I have, I want to spend my time in a different way. I can, I can better utilize that time or I can outsource it. Right. I have someone right. to help me. You yeah. Know, house tiny. Right. But I don't need to hold that as my own core value. I was able to identify where it came from and challenge it. Yeah. Right? So, so many of our ideas about life come from someone else. Right? Yes. And so it's really just like, okay, I'm a grown up now. I can see that 
you know, I had a client tell me that, you know, she's very into sports and, you know, her brothers would always tease her and say like, sports aren't ladylike, you know, you don't know, like, like the Barbies don't like the football. Yeah. And she still has a lot of like, even now, like guilt, you know, she was drinking a beer and someone posted a picture of her on um, online at a football game and she felt embarrassed, right? Like, oh, take that picture down. I don't want to look unladylike. And it's like, hey, we get to look at this. Yeah. You think that's true? Like, do you think that drinking a Budweiser at a football game defines your femininity? Yeah. And the answer is no for her, right? So it's like, okay, well, we can reject that, right? We don't have to keep that as a core value. We can totally toss it out the window. Oh, I agree totally with you, with you. I think sometimes our our goals in life get really screwed up because of the way we were brought up. And it's funny because I came from a family. My mother was OCD clean. And my dad, if you ever saw my fact week wedding, he was the guy with the Windex in his hand all the time. So it was like, you know, super cleanliness in my house. But when I when I grew up, I'm a clean person, but I'm not like OCD clean like my parents were, you know, like I, I kind of broke that because it, to me, it was not important in my life. You know, like it's important to be clean, but not to that unhealthy level extent. And, you know, I see so many people like that. Like they, they live their life accordingly to the way either their parents brought them up or their mentors or whoever brought them up, the values they kept instilling in them, even though they may not agree with everything in their head, they feel this guilt if they don't follow what that was taught to them and you know it's it's important I think like you said to break away from that be who you want to be be the person that is meaningful to you you don't have to satisfy your parents or the person that brought you up you don't have to be who they are that's who they decided to be be who you want to be that self-satisfaction that person that that makes you happy as a person and i think you know by doing that we go back to the whole being a high achieving woman being able to balance yourself and i think it will bring less stress into the picture if you could be who you want to be and choose the pathway you want to choose and how you want to do it when you want to do it and if you need guidance go to your therapist or go to somebody who's going to help you along the way. But it's, it's so important to have that self-satisfaction. I feel what's your thoughts on that? You know, you, I love the, how you just said that, like, that's how they decided to live their lives. That's who they decided to be. Right. And I speak so much about empowerment and like, mm -hmm. forget that, right. We are empowered to decide inside of this life, right, wrong. And otherwise, yes. So up. Yes. Right? like to do who we want to date you know what kind yes exactly <laughs> power ourselves, right? it's 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 the game changer yes right and you know I, again I think people kind of know that like philosophically yeah really need to pull it into their own lives like you have the power to live the life that you want yeah and you know that is true for everybody does it mean that there won't be challenges of course there's going to be challenges are there going to be you know also maybe some hurdles for sure. Right. Yeah. I can't just, you know, manifest a beautiful mansion in Bali and then get it right. There's going to be a lot of steps from point A to point B. Yeah. But it's, it starts with, it starts with that empowerment. It starts with that mindset that like, I believe that this is possible, right. We'll just start with possible. I don't even know how, what it's going to look like yet, but if I want to have better work-life balance, no problem. If I want to actually you know, lower some of the expectations and what I've decided clean looks like for my house. I'm allowed to do that, right? Yeah. I get every choice of mine to make. And, you know, that can feel really scary, but it's so liberating, yeah. right? It's just like, that's where our power lives, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah okay. I have the choice. So yeah, absolutely all that, all that good stuff. How do you get your, your patients or what, how, what advice would you give listeners on how to, kind of let go of the guilt and be your own person like what suggestions would you give them because I, I so many people they just stick on to that that core value that they were taught when they were kids and they have such a hard time being who they really want to be and I think in in the in the in the move the movement as we get older they lose who they want to be because they're so into what they think you know, they're trying to make, you know, people pleasers they are trying to make their parents happy. They're trying to go by what their parents would want them to do that. They don't even really realize who are you? I've asked clients, you know, tell me, who are you? What are your interests? What are this? What is this? And, you know, what is your 
you know, your objective. What, do, what are you really, you know, who is blah, blah, blah. And they sit there and they don't know who they are because they were so busy pleasing their parents or whoever was meaningful in their life. Yeah, you know, it's a beautiful question. And, and I think it's a bit of a complex answer, but as simplistically as I can, you know, respond to that. Yeah. I think like willingness and open minded, open mindedness and that back to that insight, right? If a, a beautiful question that I ask my clients to ask themselves is, is this working for you? Right. Because, and, and really allowing, you know, you use the word honesty, I'll roll with it. Right. Like, yeah, being honest in that answer. Right. Okay. I'm people pleasing. I'm always making sure that I am volunteering for X, Y, and Z with my kids school. I'm always showing up to work early. I'm always making sure that if my mom says, come over now, you know, she says, jump, I say, how high, how's it working? You know, drop into your body. I love semantic, semantic um, psychology, somatic psychology and mm -hmm. you know, drop on in. How's that feel? Right. Yeah. And it's like, if you're starting to notice your shoulders are getting up, right. You're clenching your jaw. You're feeling anxious. That is a good check engine light that yeah. you are getting yourself, right. Hey, this isn't actually working for me. When my mom calls and is asking me to come over again, I'm noticing that I'm feeling panic. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, once you sort of get the insight to just have a little bit of a flicker of like, huh, maybe I can do this differently. Yeah. That's the work can grow. And, you know, I, I am, I'm a therapist and a coach, so obviously I'm very biased in what I'm about to say, but I do believe working with someone who's objective in your life, um, is, is a really powerful way for transformation. You yes. know, I hear people say like, but I have friends, I have family mm -hmm. and those people are all subjective to your life. Yes, right? exactly. So they can't, you know, you're going to have to, if you're talking about, I don't know how to rework your relationship with your mom to your sister. You know, she might have big feelings about it. Yeah. Talking to someone who's outside of your life really hopefully gives you perspective. And there's all sorts of opportunities, right? Reading the book that, you know, your book, right? My book that's coming out. There's all sorts of messaging yes. that we can really absorb that helps us change our mindset. But right. it really it does require support. <laughs> you know? It does, you know, and I think it's so important. You made it such a great comment that, you know, it's so important to have an unbiased opinion because, you know, when you ask family members and friends, they know you, they have their own opinions. But when you go to somebody, if you go to a professional, they have, you know, they have an unbiased opinion and they're looking from it from the outside in and they, you know, and they're helping you look from the inside out and, you know, and you're, you're starting to see, cause we all know sometimes the answers are just so deep down repressed inside of us that you need help to have someone kind of help you dig, dig out all the dirt until you actually come to that resolution, that, that answer that you kind of knew the whole time, but you have it, all these different opinions, all these different thoughts that people put in your head. And then, you know, your people pleaser things in your head and, you know, that you really got lost in, in, in the, in the shuffle, but the answers are always within us. We know the answers. And sometimes we just need someone to help us clear our heads and help us find it. I think. Yes. When I, um, I used to, a billion moons ago, I, I would teach children and a little metaphor that I would give them is like, imagine a snow globe, right? Shake the snow globe. What do we see inside? It's like, yeah. oh, I can't see the picture. Let the snow settle. Like, what do we see now? And I think, you know, it's, it's a powerful example of like how our brain works, right? Yeah. When we're all shaken up and we have too many thoughts going on. It's really hard to get clarity on our lives. Yeah. Right? Do believe that we have the answers, right? A good therapist, a good coach is not going to give you the answer. They're just going to ask the right questions to help you find your own answer. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Where family members and friends will basically tell you what to do, you know, and it's a yeah. totally different, you know, <laughs> process. And, yeah. and everybody, like we said earlier, everyone has their own opinion, but that's, yeah. that's their opinion on how they yeah. would live their life. Totally exactly. different personality, totally different level, totally different path. You don't want to hear how they would do because, you know, what they think and what they're going to do, you're a different person. So, you know what, you need to figure out what's best for you. You're, you know, again, if you go back to what that person's saying and you follow them, you're, you're pleasing them because you're doing what they say. But are you really happy as a person, you know? Yeah. And I'm totally, uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I fall prey to this myself in therapy, like with my therapy, my coaching clients, 
I'm super objective, right? I ask really beautiful questions. I'm not judgmental. You know, to my friends, my siblings, I tell them what to do. Right? Yeah, I think we're all like that to an extent because we, you know, I don't know. It's just, you know, because I guess you feel more comfortable, you know, so it's like, you know, that it's, it, it's a, it's a positive thing that that's worked with so many people. So then you're like, you got to try this, you know, <laughs> but then when you say that yeah. they think they're, they're being told right. what to do, and then they react completely different, you know, exactly. then they're kind of like against it right away, you know, but it's, it's, that's why it's so good to get outside guidance, you know, and have that person work with you, you know, that person that you feel connected to that you could share with, because it's just a totally different feeling. And it, 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 I think you get such a more positive outcome when you work with a therapist or a coach that actually, you know, can help you dig through the dirt and really find the answers deep down inside you. Exactly. Love it. Now, when, when, you know, I think by following all these tools and techniques that you've mentioned, you know, a person who's kind of stuck, you know, could actually straighten their life out, whether you're a shameful mom, because you're, you're trying to be successful, and you you feel this guilt for not helping your child, there's, there's ways of looking at it, you know, and maybe you can give some good, you know, ideas and, and tips to people on how they could really balance their lives and be happy with themselves and be able to be successful but be balanced and have and just live that healthy happy and productive life yeah you know something I've been thinking about recently is like the word balance and the idea of it and I think when we think of balance we, we think of a, like you know that that scale where we're like okay things need to be equal right so yeah. if, for instance I have you know, career, career responsibilities or outside family responsibilities and I have family responsibilities. Well, I have to find a way that to, to match those up. And I think actually that's not quite right. So, um, you know, how I explain it for people that are starting is like, you know, again, lean into that mindfulness. There are going to be some days that you wake up and you just want to be around your family and you don't want to touch your email. Like, let that be okay. Right. Mm -hmm. There's other days where you're like, you know what, I need to step away from my family and I really need to go to the gym. I really need to see my girlfriends. I really need to just go to the mall by myself, whatever it is you do yeah. for you. Right. It's just mindfulness is knowing what you need and listening to that intuition yeah. and not judging it. Right. And so to me, that is how we find balance. It's really starting to trust ourselves again, like yeah. perfectly like what you said. We have the answers. We have the clarity. We just need to shush away all the voice that's telling us it's wrong. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if we get more insightful and we let those answers come without judgment, we mm -hmm. will find naturally our own balance for things because everyone's balance is going to look different. Yeah. Right. So I don't think there's like this prescriptive measure of like, okay, you've gotten it right. If you spend 10 hours on work and probably no one spends 10 hours, 50 hours on work, whatever it is. Yeah. Right? It's just each one of our lives is going to look different. Right. Just trusting like self trust to me is one of the biggest catalysts of, of transformation, of change, of finding that quote unquote balance. Right. I think that's so important. You know, I, I think those those points that you just made are, are are very important. And I love when you talk about intuition because we all have it. We all have that inter, you know, in, intuition. And it's, it's, you know, a lot of times, like if we don't listen to our intuition, we tend to do the wrong things. You, know, you always have like a little voice inside you. And there's so many times when like, oh, Stacey, you really shouldn't do that, you know, and I'll go and do it anyway. And like, oh, shoot. I, I shouldn't have did that, you know, and, you know, the, you know, our inner in instincts, you know, is so powerful. It's really understanding our mind, body, our heart, you know, and everything, you know, we're all, everything's connected. And we, st if we understand our inner self, you know, there, there's so much richness, richness in that, that could be absorbed. You know, we know the answers to everything. We just have yeah. to really take the time to really understand ourselves and the signals that our heart gives us that our intuition gives us and really go by what our body's trying to tell us exactly that you know and something like you know some of I think when we're starting some of the the deeper darker thoughts that we might have like letting those ones in too so something that I hear from clients sometimes is like oh today my kids I don't like my kids Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, this is so horrible to say. And it's like, well, if you're having a day where you're showing up and you're not liking your kids, first of all, like raise your hand if you're a mom and you've never had that thought, right? Like <laughs> no hands would be up. Like every, every human 
on this planet has days where they're burnt out and overwhelmed. Yes. Instead of shaming that thought, just allow it in. And then like, again, let that be a cue card for you to like, okay, maybe I need, this is clearly, is this working for me? No. Right. How can I make more time for myself? What do I need right now? Yeah. And, you know, allowing needs in like I, one of my mantras is I give per- myself permission to have needs. Right. right. Some days I need to take a bath and like lock my door and like not let a pet, a husband, a child into that space. Right. Yeah. I leave my phone behind. And it's like, that's what I authentically need. I need space away from people needing me. Right. Yes. I just need to be needless. Um, so, you know, again, you have the answers. It's just not, not shaming them when they come through. Yes. So important. So important. Now you're you're working on a book now and it's in the process of being launched. It's going to be a a little bit before it's actually launched because you have some things that need to be done, but can you tell us a little about the book? Yeah. So, um, assuming we keep the title, it's called, yes, I am too much. (laughs) And, um, it was birthed from a fight that I had with my husband, when I was saying being my assertive self and he was like, my God, you are too much. (laughs) And, um, I went out with a girlfriend later that night to complain about him. And (laughs) and she was like, well, there's the title of your book. Right. And I, when I was talking to her, I was like, you know what? I am too much. Right. Like, but that isn't a negative for me. Right. Like, what does that mean for me? It's like, well, I'm a really good friend and I have a good work ethic and I put my time and, and, you know, value into my family and I'm opinionated and I'm strong willed and I have things to stay on this world. And I'm going to stop making myself freaking smaller, like lowering my voice and apologizing for who I am. And I had this, you know, ranty over cocktails thing. And that really birthed kind of what I talk about in my book is just, you know, again, particularly for women, how to show up for yourself, how to have a voice, how to stop feeling guilty about the things that you want in life, how to make space for yourself. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the message there. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Now, can you tell people where like different services that you offer? So you're a therapist and you do do coaching and you're also a worldwide speaker. So can you tell us a little about that and how people can get in touch with you if they need that and any other things that you have available? Yeah. So I am a therapist in the state of New Jersey. So I take clients. I primarily at this point, as you can probably tell, work with women. Um, and I specialize in anxiety, trauma, and sex and intimacy. So if someone's working through any of that, um, my coaching offering is called Becoming Unstoppable. And it's a program designed to you know, piggyback a lot of what we just said. So women who know what they want out of life are ready to do the work, um, and what they want out of life is more fulfillment, but they don't quite know how to get there yet. Yeah. Uh, I do a ton of speaking events. So I appear on a bunch of podcasts um, and I'm launching my own podcast called Becoming Unstoppable uh, on February 1st. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. All the places you find your podcasts. Um, I My handles are a note from your therapist in pretty much all social media outlets. Yeah. And my website is by the same name, www.anotefromyourtherapist.com. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. Now, before we go, can you give a couple of takeaways? Cause we talked about a lot of different things, but we, if we could just focus on some different takeaways that you think will be most beneficial for people from the topics that we've discussed in this, in this podcast. Yeah. So I'm going to beat the hell out of this point. Mindset, 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 right? Really leaning into confidence. I can do it. I am permissions, right? I love the framework of permissions. I give myself permission to take up space. I give myself permission to need time away from my kid and really actually committing to practicing that, right? If you just hear a podcast and sort of think about it quickly, it'll, you no change will happen. It's like going to the gym. You got to keep showing up. The change is going to be really gradual. Eventually you will see it. Yeah. So, you know, my biggest takeaway is just really, really focusing on what you're saying to yourself. I think that that's the biggest catalyst for change for sure. I love it. Yeah. And that's so important. That is so important. Well, thank you so much, Allison, for being on the show. You have given us a world of information, very inspiring, very, emo- you know, motivational. And I think it's so important. I think women really need to hear this advice and it really is 
very powerful. Everything that you've talked about today is very powerful because if you do follow these suggestions that you've made, you know, across our, our entire discussion, you can really, really, you know, improve your overall life and your health. So, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to share, you know, your own you know, uh, experiences and also, you know, share a lot of helpful advice that I think will be beneficial to many of our listeners. Thank you so much. I love this conversation. Thanks for having it. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Have a great day. So.